Welcome to the African Leadership Series, where we bring you great inspirational speeches of African leaders. Nigeria hopes to work with other African states for the progress of Africa and to assist in bringing all African territories to a state of responsible independence. The recent tragic events in the Congo Republic must be uppermost in all our minds. And it is about that country which I wish to speak to you first. I frankly admit, Mr. President, that there are many features of this seemingly intractable problem which remains obscure to me. I am in some doubt as to the exact manner in which the Constitution granting independence to that country was drawn up by the colonial power which formerly administered the territory. And as to the degree of consultation which there was with the Congolese peoples themselves, and at what level that consultation was carried out. I do not know how widely the provisions of the new constitution were known in that country, or whether there is any pattern of administration going up from the village to the provincial and to the national level. Many other questions present themselves which require to be answered if we are to find a solution to the present problems. For instance, Mr. President, were the new constitution imposed from above or freely accepted by the Congolese? And what are the human resources in the country? And what sort of government machinery is available to execute whatever policies may be designed upon by the Congolese government. Nevertheless, with the information which is available to us, we in Nigeria feel that there are several important factors to be constantly borne in mind in dealing with the problem. The first of these is that Africa must not be allowed to become a battleground in the ideological struggle. For this reason, the Congo situation must be a matter to be dealt with primarily by African states at the political level. <laughs> Secondly, we believe that in dealing with the problem of creating a real political life in the country itself, it will be necessary to start at the bottom by seeing that local and provincial authorities are established while maintaining the essential unity of the country. We also believe that the Congolese people were right to appeal to the United Nations Organization for help and advice in rebuilding their country rather than to turn to any individual country, individual power. Until achieving our own independence, we have hesitated to add our voice to the general discussion about the Congo, lest we should merely add to the confusion. But now, Mr. President, I feel that it is my duty to put before you and to ask for your sympathetic consideration of the possible solutions which have suggested themselves to us. We warmly applauded the immediate response of the United Nations Organization to the Congolese disaster. The speed with which troops were sent to maintain law and order was most commendable. But the mere sending of armed forces is not enough. I consider it essential 
that the United Nations organization should thoroughly investigate the root causes of the troubles which have arisen there, and I suggest the appointment of a fact-finding commission to look into the circumstances which caused the present crisis. Without a proper and thorough diagnosis, it is idle to pretend that an effective remedy can be prescribed. And here I would say that, to my mind, it is most important that none of the great powers should be represented on the fact-finding commission because, however honest are their intentions, it would be inevitable that they would be regarded as having a particular interest in the problem. If you like more African speeches like this, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to catch all our latest videos. Remember to leave your suggestions on the topics you would like us to cover in the comments below.